Welcome back. Let's talk about the markets and the way forward. Rohit Srivastava of IndiaCharts.com joins in now. Rohit, what's the call now? We've hit all-time high levels. We appear to be dithering at, these, uh, at this juncture. Uh, what's the trading approach? So from a trade perspective, uh, we are seeing multiple signs to, you know, expect uh, some kind of a pullback in the market. Uh, what size and scale uh, that will end up being is a bigger call. Uh, but at least in the near term, I think, uh, you know, uh, there is room for us to shave off, you know, several hundred points from here. Given that Nifty uh, for the last five to six days is actually seeing substantially lower volumes than it has seen in the prior period, you know, so that shows an exhaustion in the large caps uh, that we are seeing. Of course, some of that trading has shifted uh, to the mid cap. So I think, uh, uh, you know, purely looking at levels at around 18,660 should be a key resistance level to watch, plus or minus a few points here and there. And my sense is from there, we do have at least near term downside to say 18,400. Uh, but even if we break that, maybe even down to 17,800. So we're looking for some kind of you know, uh, rollover. There are also, you know, many other sentimental data points which actually add up uh, to what we call as meaningful risk in the markets at this point of time. For example, the rollover that we saw from November to December uh, was one of the largest in terms of points premium paid by, uh, you know, traders who are actually holding long positions. You know, so this is at 100 and, uh, you know, 60 points, 70 points. Uh, it's one of the highest. We've really not seen that kind of number. And at the same time, you're seeing close to now, yesterday's data shows 90,000 contracts plus long on the side of, uh, you know, foreign institutional investors, which is also uh, over a one-year high. I think June of uh, 2021 is the last time we had a number close to 92,000 contracts. And so that kind of long position usually leads to a pause in the market. And I think uh, uh, that's the setup, multiple data points coming together. But I think the volume part is really meaningful because you have a higher price in Nifty and lower volumes showing a volume divergence, which sort of is an exhaustion sign uh, for the market in the days ahead. What do you make of uh, the volatility index, Rohit? Because, you know, I haven't seen the VIX as low in the last 12 months or so. In fact, uh, you could extend it all the way up to the pandemic period as well, where we saw, saw that sharp spike in the VIX, and it sustained for uh, about 18 to 24 months after cooling off in the manner that it has. Now we are close to fresh record highs. Uh, tensions across the world are still there. But the wicks does not, uh, you know, signify that. I mean, we have the wicks at around 13, 13 and a half levels. At times, it has gone sub-12 as well. Do you think it's factoring it a fair amount of uh, complacency? Yes, I think uh, that's one more addition to what we call a bunch of sentiment indicators. Uh, you know, extreme long positions, rollover uh, positions, and the wicks, which shows uh, clear complacency. Uh, or the willing, um, we can measure, I mean, we can give it different names. We can say that people are not willing to pay too much for protection, you know, so that's another way of looking at it, uh, which means, uh, uh, you know, people don't think they need protection and so they're not paying a big premium for uh, the option prices and which is why the VIX has really come down so much. So this belief that, you know, there's no risk, we are probably decoupled from what is happening around the world is, I think, the risk on the table right now because uh, nothing has really changed as far as, uh, what is happening in the U.S. is concerned. I think the short-term drop in the dollar uh, post some of the recent comments uh, did bring back some of the risk on trades around the world. But uh, if we really look deeper into the earnings trajectory for U.S. Uh, you know businesses over the next one to two quarters, it's going to be significantly you know uh, to the downside, which is earnings are going to fall uh, in the next one to two quarters. Even in our, in our own case, we have seen flattening of earnings on the, in this quarter. Uh, which is a start to, you know, from the growth cycle that we had because of the push that we got during COVID. So I think there's this room, you know, that uh, we need to consolidate correct before we can move higher because the whole trajectory of earnings, which had been spurred by the liquidity of, you know, the post-pandemic period uh, is now, you know, sort of coming to an end. And I think in our markets, uh, that's not been deeply discounted in terms of, uh, you know, valuations. Most people want to believe that you know, this uh, ride can go on, but a lot of the sectors that are doing well right now, say, for example, hospitality and so on, these are all the unlocked trades of the preceding period. Uh, I think that liquidity uh, tightening impact on valuations is somewhat missing uh, in the Indian markets, and that remains the ongoing risk. So you're expecting a downside, a bit of a correction, but you don't see the Nifty going below 17,800, right? So that's about an 800-point drop from here on. 
No, I, 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 I'm, I mean, since the question uh, you raised to me was short term, uh, okay. I didn't, I don't want to really put levels below that right now. Got it. But what I is that the risk to, uh, you know, more downside is definitely open. So we would not say that, you know, it gets to 17, 800 and we should be buying over there. I think uh, there could be more risk once things really turn over because that's how market trends are. Levels of 15,000, thereabout. Do you see the markets headed there? I didn't get you. No, I'm saying in June, the Nifty was closer to 15,000, right? 15 and a half thousand. Do you see the Nifty headed there? Uh, so, uh, what what I'm really seeing is that the risk of it going there is still open. Okay. okay. Uh, if we don't get there, say for example, let me take the monthly bands. Uh, uh, they earlier they were you know sub fifteen thousand. Now they've actually come above fifteen thousand. So that's good news. Uh, on the monthly bands are somewhere around fifteen thousand five hundred. That is sort of the two standard deviation move, which still is uh, you know within uh, the closeness to fifteen two hundred where we had reached. So we can't completely rule that out. Uh, uh, unless, you know, the structure of the, something really changes in the structure in the macros. Till that happens, I think we can't rule that out. All right. And Rohit, what would you think about the Nifty Bank? What is the kind of uh, range that you expect for the Nifty Bank? And specifically within that, if you could take us through what you are seeing, uh, which is the PSU banks as well. So my sense with, uh, you know, the PSU banks is that they've probably peaked in the, uh, for the time being, I think uh, it could be several weeks or months before you see new highs in that sector. And the reason is simple. We have seen peak optimism and volume in the sector. Uh, the volume is like, uh, you know, two year, three year high, uh, what you've really seen recently. And whenever you see price volume action, that is, uh, you know, that magnificent, uh, you sort of come to the end of that particular trend for a while. So even if the upward trend in PSU banks has to continue, I think uh, the case is that it's going to pull back and going to correct. So this is not a right, this would basically not be a right time to making fresh entries into PSU banks. In fact, might make great sense to actually book gains and then look for a better entry point later on. So that's my sense as far as PSU banks are concerned. For the Nifty Bank Nifty, I'll give a similar range. Like on the upside, I would say the upper band around, you know, 43,500 is uh, the upside and the downside would be closer to around 41,000. All right, Roy, thank you for joining in and uh, giving us your view, though the next time we'd like to know, you know, is if there's anything that you are positive on right now and something that uh, one should go ahead and buy at these elevated levels as well. But uh,